yeah, this happened two minutes ago via text, so, so I, there's not a slide. Um, but hi, everyone. For those of you who I haven't had the opportunity to meet, my name is Marcela Torres Cervantes. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the associate director at the Carolina Latinx Center. Um, I, first of all, am so proud of all of you that spoke today, all of your messages, especially those of you that are still students. This is a scary thing to do. Um, Alan, you did great, don't worry. Um, but it's really, it's really beautiful to see you all standing here um, because now that you've done it once, you can do it again and you can keep getting better. And so I just wanna congratulate you and encourage you all to keep going um, and for sharing your wisdom because you all do come with a lot of wisdom and genius. Um, I was born in Monterrey, Mexico, and I have two older brothers and my mom and dad. I'm very close with my family. Um, and my mom was born and raised in Mexico City. She's very clear about that. She's like, you might have been born in Monterrey, but you were raised by a, you know, mom from El Defen. So very clear on that energy. Um, and, you know, what does someone do when they were raised in the second largest city in the, in the world? They moved to Clinton, North Carolina. Um, to raise their family and so my dad's a hog farmer or was worked in the hog industry still does to this day and so in Mexico at the time there weren't a lot of jobs in the agricultural world they were doing a lot of cool things with farming and a lot of opportunities for immigrants and so we moved to the US and my mom was one she's one of these people that to this day is one of my biggest inspirations because at the time they were saying all right men move go get money for your family it's in the back so my dad was like, I'm going to move to the United States, do something, and I'll send you money. She was like, are we married or did I miss a memo? And so she was like, I'm coming with you. And so she was really adamant. But then she tells me that the first night in the U.S., they came in and it was dark. And then she wakes up and they are in the forest, as she calls it. They were living in a trailer on the farm and she just saw trees. She saw deer. And again, she's a city girl. So she was like, what did I do? I asked for this and now this is what I have to deal with. And in her mind, we're living in the US for three years and then going back. That was always this mindset that she had growing up. Well, three years has become 30 um, and we're still here. Um, but in that she was having to raise us. And um, I wanted to shout you out, particularly Peru from 32 years, because my mom was about 30 when she moved to the US. And when she kind of came here, she has a college degree from, from a, a school in Monterrey but it's not recognized in the States. She couldn't get a job. She's a journalist by trade. She does a lot of stati statistics, but here she just couldn't get any work. And so she didn't get to work. And I get a lot of my work ethic from both of my parents. And so I'm imagining like if I were to move to Germany tomorrow and they were like, your US degree means nothing. I don't know the language. And she had three kids in tow. I'd be like, uh, no, I would never do that, right? And so now, as a 30 year old, 32 year old as well, I look back on a lot of what she did and I'm like, ¿Cómo hizo eso? like, what was she thinking? But she did that so that I could have what I have now, right? And so I'm really grateful for that perspective, but then also now the role that I have where I get to work with a lot of these young people in the room. And so I want to thank you all for the work that you're doing again, because it's because of people like my mom who did something terrifying and gave up so much for folks like me but now I put myself in spaces where I'm like, how can I be brave today to make sure that there's spaces for others? And so the work that I've gotten to do with y'all on the individual level, on the community level, um, has been really valuable. But the one thing I wanna make sure that I leave you all with today is don't do it alone. Because I think that that is a lesson that I'm learning from my parents where they, again, my mom was like, que hice? What did I do? I moved to the United States, I don't know this language. And that was something she had to struggle with because she couldn't really, complained to my dad because she begged to him to let her go. She couldn't complain to her siblings because they were like, you asked for this. And so she had to work through that a lot by herself. And I went through something similar when I went to college. I was pretty adamant by the time I was 18, I'm leaving North Carolina. I'm going to go find a community. And where's Latinos? They're in Texas. They're in New York. They're in DC. And so I moved to DC for my undergraduate degree. And in my first month, I was like, gay <laughs> I was, I went to, well, I was at George Washington University. And for those of you that don't know, it was at the time, the second most expensive school in the country. So as a low income student, I was meeting other Latinos, but they had wealth, okay? I didn't know I was poor until I went to college. And then it was like, oh, <laughs> I'm poor. Like it was this, <laughs> 
y'all. I, uh, my little anecdote for that that I'll never forget is that we got, we didn't have a dining hall because students didn't eat enough in a dining hall. So they got rid of it and all they had was like a, basically a debit card they gave you with $1,500 for the year, year. And that's what you had to make work. And they, they all had their own money. So they would fly through that money like that. And I did the math and I was like, okay, I can spend about $15 a day to make this work. And that was breakfast, lunch, dinner, laundry, printing and $15 a day and I went to the cafeteria that day or like whatever they had and it was like wait by food like the like the whole food style and they were these strawberries not strawberries grapes and I was like oh they're juicy they look so good so I get my little plate and I like go and I weigh it it was $11 a pound y'all know how grapes are so it was about $20 that I spent on those grapes and I was like, I'm too embarrassed to tell them I can't afford that. And so I paid it, and that was food for a day and a half, essentially, that I spent in that one moment. But I was too embarrassed to ask for help. I was, because, I was re repeating my mom's things of, I did this to myself, so I need to suffer. And then now, in retrospect, there were scholarships I never knew about. There were programs I never applied to. There were things that I saw that I was like, why would I be chosen for that? So I don't. So if you've been my student, you know that I've been like, apply for that, run for that, get that, get the, because those are the things that no one ever told me. So please put your name in the ring, throw your name out there. Even if you get a no, it might be a not right now, or it might be not this, can I offer you that? You just don't know. And there's so many people in here, there's so much knowledge in here. Use each other, ask each other, tell, you, tell each other when you win and tell each other when you fail so that we can learn from one another and build that community and normalize things. So I just want to continue to tell you all, congratulations on how far you've gone already. Continue to support each other and turn around behind you and make sure that those people are following you after. I loved that field hockey story, that now there's more women on the, on the field because of that. Please, there needs to be more of y'all in your classrooms and in leadership positions and everything around you. But thank you for letting me hop in on the end of this charla conversation. Um, and the last plug that I will say is, I am working at the Carolina Latinx Center we are celebrating five years of existence on the UNC campus, which is really exciting. Um, and candidly, you know, DEI is under attack in higher education right now. We aren't necessarily a DEI office, but it's a reality that we just have to be aware of everywhere. So don't take things like our centers for granted. Use us so that we aren't seen as an accessory or as an option, but rather a priority and a requirement for these institutions. So please come visit our center. We're in Abernathy Hall. Caddy Corner to the Carolina Inn, really close to Franklin. I've seen y'all rush Franklin, okay, from down here. So y'all can run up that hill. Y'all can take a nice little bus ride, a little stroll over to Abernathy on campus, and we'd love to see you. But muchísimas gracias. Thank you. Yeah.